Leigh here from LeighFruitSci.com, and in this video, we'll look at one final SN1 reaction involving a hydrate shift and carbocation rearrangement. When 2-bromo-3-methylbutane reacts with H plus in ETOH. If you're not familiar with ETOH, it's simply ethanol, which is CH3 CH2OH. But as we work through the reaction and have to repeat that ethanol again and again, it gets tedious and time consuming to have to write it out again and again, so we simplify it by writing ET to represent the ethyl group attached to the OH. Let's look at our checklist to analyze the reaction and verify that SN1 can take place. The alkyl chain, specifically the carbon holding the leaving group, is a secondary carbon. While the secondary carbon can form a carbocation, this is actually a trick question because the secondary carbon is sitting directly near a tertiary carbon. Anytime you have a secondary carbocation forming near something that would form a more stable carbocation, you're going to have a carbocation rearrangement, and in this case a hydride shift. The fact that we can have a stable and then more stable carbocation forming, we can definitely undergo a one-type reaction but here we'll focus on the SN1. Bromine as a leaving group will form a large Br- in solution, which is stable, and therefore we can say that this is a good leaving group and will not slow down our reaction. Once again, we have no nucleophile or base obvious in this reaction, and I want you to notice the trend. A lot of the SN1 and E1 reactions will take place as a solvolysis reaction, where the solvent is your attacking molecule. Ethanol as a solvent is considered a weak nucleophile due to the fact that it has lone pairs on the electronegative oxygen. However, given that it's taking place in an acidic solution, we cannot form any negative charges, making this incapable of doing a two-type reaction, meaning SN2 or E2, and has to resort to a one-type, such as SN1 or E1. And finally, since ethanol has hydrogen bound to oxygen, it's considered a polar protic solvent and will stabilize any charged intermediates that form in this reaction. Once again, justifying the fact of a one-type reaction. So we've determined that an SO1 reaction can take place. Now let's look at the mechanism. The mechanism starts out when bromine grabs the electrons away from its bond with carbon, breaking off and giving me a Br- in solution. We'll let the bromine float away and only focus on the carbon chain, specifically on our secondary carbocation. As we mentioned, this is near a tertiary carbon, which could potentially form a more stable carbocation. We'll fill in the invisible hydrogen and then show how the hydride, together with its bonding electrons, break away from the tertiary carbon and move to the secondary carbon. As a result, the secondary carbon is no longer deficient and therefore no longer has a charge, but the tertiary carbon, having lost the hydrogen, now has a positive charge, giving us a much more stable carbocation intermediate. The hydride shift, or carbocation rearrangement, is a very fast step and will happen before ethanol even has a chance to attack. But now that it has attacked, we can show an ethanol molecule using its lone pair of electrons to attack the positive carbon. This is what you consider the opportunistic attack because the weak nucleophile has to wait for that positive charge to form. We'll let the purple hydrogen become invisible again and instead focus on the rest of the reaction. When ethanol is bound to the carbon, it now has three bonds, one lone pair and a positive charge which we get rid of by bringing another ethanol from solution to remove that hydrogen and give oxygen back the bonding electrons. This gives me a somewhat unexpected final product given that the nucleophile didn't substitute on the same carbon that initially had my leaving group. Now one more thing we want to consider is the stereochemistry of the starting molecule and lack of stereochemistry in the product. This molecule starts out with a chiral carbon where the leaving group is attached, but as soon as that leaving group leaves, the hybridization reverts from sp3 to sp2, giving me a flat achiral intermediate. If the ethanol had attacked at the secondary carbon, our resulting product would be a racemic mixture where we have 50% R and 50% S of a chiral product. However, since we had a carbocation rearrangement, and the carbon that eventually got attacked by ethanol has two methyl groups, we no longer have four unique substituents and therefore have an achiral product. I work through many more SO1 reactions as well as a number of tricky problems on my membership site, which you can find at 
studyhall.layofforsci.com slash join. Again, that's studyhall.layofforsci.com slash join. For the complete series on substitution and elimination reactions, visit my website layofforsci.com slash substitution dash elimination. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofforsci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofforsci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash layofforsci. There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.